Rami Show. It's time to go around the league with the Athletics NFL Insider, Jeff Howe. All right, so usually we do this on Tuesdays at 4.13, but the A's are kicking us off the air today. So uh, we asked Jeff if he could help us out and join us a little bit earlier than usual, and he obliged. So we thank Jeff Howe of The Athletic for joining us right now. Again, he'll join us each and every Tuesday, usually at about quarter past four. Jeff, uh, your thoughts on Nathaniel Hackett's decision last night, and how have or how do you think people in the game are reacting to it? Uh, That was a rough one, and (laughs) one I'm sure, as he basically already said, he'd like to have back. Uh, I mean, I understand kind of making that decision before the drive starts, like what yard line you want to get to, what yard line your kicker is comfortable from getting at and trying to remain as present and in the moment and objective and taking the emotion out of it as much as possible. But, you know, you kind of have to see how things are going to evolve over the course of the drive. And, you know, McManus has a big leg. Uh, of course, he's got the distance from there. But he was, he's, he's like 2 of 10, I think it was, in his career from 58-plus. He hasn't made a kick since 2016 outside of Denver or a dome from at least 55. So even though you have the leg, even though it might have felt good in warm-ups, you, know, you got to look at some of these other numbers and realize that Russell Wilson's probably got a better chance of getting you five yards uh, with three timeouts to continue that drive than McManus has of making a 64-yarder. And I know the chain of command head coach supersedes quarterback, but can't Russell Wilson there call the timeout or, you know, holler to the sideline, no, let's go for it? We've seen, like, we've seen franchise quarterbacks do that in the past. He wouldn't be out of line and would be far from the first to do either one of those things. Yeah, you're right. I mean, but that's a tough situation for a quarterback to be in, especially you know with a new team, a new coach, and you don't have maybe a ton of history. I know those two guys have a really have gotten off to a really good start together, uh, and I'm, I would guess, I would assume, if Russell Wilson did call timeout right off the jump there, uh, you know, rather than letting the play clock lead all the way down, and he went over to Hackett and he said, "Hey, let's go for it." I, I have to think, given Hackett's aggressive uh, nature, that he probably would have obliged. Jeff Howe is with us here from the Athletic Cattles and Rami Sacktown Sports. Jeff, uh, Jay Glazer had a report over the weekend that John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan went to the leaders of the Niners to make sure they had the back of Trey Lance when the decision was made to uh, keep Garoppolo in town. I I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to a lot of people in San Francisco, but how much do you believe that team believes in Lance right now? I think there's there's quite a bit of belief and it's it's I mean this storyline man it's it's tough for you guys out there because it seems <laughs> like everything that happens is, is really under a microscope uh and I, I you know the start wasn't ideal you certainly can't be giving away games to the Bears uh who are at the very beginning of a rebuild and but it's like I, I don't want to have a referendum on Trey Lance's career that one game in a monsoon that he didn't play well in <laughs> Against a good defensive-minded coach is all of a sudden like, okay, well, that's it. He's clearly not going to, you know, this isn't going to be the guy. Right. Uh, I, so it's, it's tough. I mean, I still think, you know, he, he, I don't know, benefit of the doubt is the right word. But this goes well beyond just, let's say, a month of training camp practices or, you know, the decision to trade up in the draft. It, you know, it's not like uh, – you got to believe in your evaluation of the player pre-draft, what you've seen since he's shown up a year plus ago and everything else that's gone onto the field. You're going to weigh that a whole lot more than one game in a driving rainstorm. We saw the report that they gathered 15 of the leaders on the team and told them we need you to have Trey Lance's back if we're going to do this Jimmy G thing. Is that an odd or unusual move for, for an organization to do when making a decision like the one they made? Uh, it's certainly interesting, but it you know it, it makes sense because any time that there is a different a change in direction at the quarterback position, and you know especially when you're going to go younger, and you've got a veteran there who has played with a lot of those the older guys on the team and has won some games and has played reasonably well, you have to make sure that the dynamic inside the locker room is not going to start to splinter. So. When you've got everybody on the same page or you trust that the leaders are going to keep everybody on the same page, then it's going to give you a lot more confidence in order to make a move that they knew was going to, I don't know, ruffle some feathers, at least from the media aspect of it. Because 
when you have a situation like Sunday when the offense doesn't perform well and you lose the game that you probably shouldn't have lost, the media attention is going to get the whole, a whole lot more difficult. And you got to make sure, again, that there's, you, you don't start to have guys leaking information or, or doing something that's going to disrupt the potential of the team long term. Jeff Howe is with us here on this Tuesday. Jerry Jones, Jeff, said earlier today that Dak Prescott is not going on the IR. Uh, your your thoughts on that decision, and I would say obviously that Cooper Rush is going to be the guy in the meantime, correct? Yeah, I mean, that's what it seems like, and it's uh, the offense with Dak didn't look good as it was, so going to his backup, you know, maybe maybe Tampa's defense is a whole lot better. You know, we know what Tampa's defense is capable of. I don't think there was a, a ton of hype on that unit, but, you know, maybe they are better than people were kind of giving them credit for going into the season, and that was the root of some of those offensive issues but you know it's not going to get any better without Dak Prescott on the field uh it was surprising to see that they are leaving the door open for him to start let's say maybe four weeks from now after having that hand surgery uh certainly especially in the aftermath of the game when it sounded like could be looking at two months so clearly the Cowboys got better news than they anticipated getting after the surgery and you know that kind of keeps that window open I'll tie the last two subjects together to wrap this thing up. As soon as Dak Prescott went down, there were people going, "Ah, can we interest you in a Jimmy Garoppolo? Do you think the Cowboys or anybody around the league is going to be calling seriously about trading for Jimmy Garoppolo if their quarterback situation changes on a dime the way that we saw the Cowboys? I mean, it was my first thought, too. Uh, you, you've got to think about that. I mean, if you don't, Cooper Rush is an unknown, and of course, there's going to be an element of the unknown in bringing in somebody like Garoppolo, if something like that were to happen. You know, how is he going to you know, mesh with the coaching staff? Is he going to be able to pick up the offense as quickly as he needs to? But this Cowboys roster is talented, and it's, it's certainly talented enough to be in the playoffs. Maybe it's talented enough to contend for an NFC championship. I don't know. But if, if Cooper Rush is not the answer, and there's a drastic drop-off in quarterback play, you know, you owe it to yourself and everybody, the other 52 guys on that active roster to – you know, it's, it's very similar to the topic that we've had, you know, with Trey Lance and keeping Garoppolo. Like, you've got a Super Bowl caliber roster. You know, you don't want to all of a sudden lose the season, lose control of the season because your, your quarterback, your starting quarterback is down for at least a month. So I, I, it's a much more tradable contract now than it was before the restructure. I don't know what the 49, what it would take the 49ers to give him up. But if you're the Cowboys, I think you should at least owe it to yourself to make the call to figure out what the price tag is. Jeff, as always, we appreciate the time, man, and thanks for being so accommodating today. We'll we'll get back to the regular time next week. We appreciate you. It was very, very difficult to reorganize my schedule. (laughs) (laughs) Anything for you guys. All right, Jeff. Thanks, buddy. There goes uh, 